is part two of lesson five and we're now on cash flow forecasts. So if you see the Niffler and any other of the beasts, then that's where you get the help. Right, we're still on cash flow forecasts and investigating positive and negative cash flows, but now we're going to go into a bit more nitty gritty. We're going to look at the formula for cash flow. We're going to explore more detail of the importance of cash flow and you're going to be able to evaluate and make decisions having looked at a company's cash flow. So we've got um, vocabulary like net cash flow, which is part of your formula. Mortgage, that's a, um, a particular loan word. Forecasting and predictions. And as you can see at the bottom, we've got further finance um, careers, fraud internet banking manager, fraud credit analyst and fraud risk manager. Weirdly, fraud is big business. Task one, which ones are inflows and which are outflows? Straightforward, grab one of the blue ticks and put them in the right column. So if credit sales are an inflow, put it in that box in the left hand side. If not, it goes in the outflow. Off you go. Two formula you need to be aware of for cash flow forecast. Net cash flow equals total inflows minus total outflows. And then closing balance is opening balance plus net cash flow. So you need to learn those two. So the uses and importance of a cash flow forecast. Cash flow forecasts are useful when you're deciding to produce new goods or services, invest in new resources, carry out new activities, expand or reduce existing activities. These are the sorts of decisions that you might take once you have calculated your net profit and you are making a retained profit decision. So why do companies do it? Well, a business can't survive without cash. I'm sure you know that bit and therefore the business must be able to make sure there's all, they've always got enough cash and cash is a current asset it's the one that helps a company be most liquid and if you're wondering what software can actually help with cash flows then the first one is spreadsheets it's part of microsoft office as you get more into uh, into detail then there will be specialist accountancy ones but right now that'll do and it helps businesses calculate what if situations Right, task two, complete this statement with the missing figures. So don't get put off by how many figures there are. You're filling in the white boxes, so there's only three. The first one, net cash flow, that's where you need to actually use the formula from slide four. That's net cash flow equals total inflows minus total outflows. And then they're all color coded to make life easier. So you're looking at the blue rows, but just for January. So total inflows in January is what? The top blue one. And total outflows for January is what? The bottom blue one. And you write the answer in the white space. The rent is marked, but it's easier than you think. If you look at January, March, April, then it's actually suggesting that rent is a fixed cost. So that one's relatively easy to fill in. March opening balance comes from where? What 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 number were you told it has to be used, which is the last day before the 1st of March? So whatever the last day before the 1st of March was, that's what you closed with. So you open March with dot, dot, dot. Cash flow analysis, Eleanor's cash flow forecast. Eleanor runs a pet ambulance service. She discovers that her van is in need of a repair and will be off the road for two weeks in July. You need to complete the cash flow forecast for Eleanor task three. So you need to use the net cash flow formula again, total inflows minus total outflows, and then you can work out the closing balance. If you can't remember, the formula for closing balance is opening balance plus net cash flow. In July, you need to use those two formulas again. 
the opening balance and the closing balance. Remember, the opening balance in July is whatever it was in the close of June. And to calculate the closing balance, it's opening balance plus net cash flow. And there's August. You've got to work out both figures again. So whatever you close July with is what for August? And then that formula again, closing balance equals opening balance plus net cash flow. This time now you're going to use the information. So when you've completed the numbers in the uh, missing numbers in the cash flow forecast, you've got to look at what's going on with the opening and closing balance and actually discuss whether Eleanor can afford to take the van off for two weeks in July. Write your answer for number four in the box next to the Niffler. And question five, what would you advise her to do? So your advice is the answer to number five. Why is cash flow forecasting important? Task six, if a business owner knows what money is coming in and what money is going out, dot, 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 this is your time to write your answer. And I'd like you to use the four words below, chase, take action, time and predict. And there's a starter for you in that box. Using a cash flow forecast is important because, because we always love the word because in business studies, and you need to complete this with an extended sentence, making sure you use all four words. When producing a cash flow forecast, there are actually five components that need to be considered, not just the four now, inflows and outflows, as we've looked at before and now we're going to add in net cash flow as the new one and the final two opening and closing balance. Now remember net cash flow is simply total inflows minus total outflows. Oh look here's some help. Total inflow equals all the inflows added together and you get a, a subtotal. Total outflows are all the outflows added together. In case you've forgotten, net cash flow is inflow minus outflow. So that's those two totals from above. And closing balance comes from opening balance plus net cash flow. Task seven, label the five components on this cash flow forecast. Don't get put off by the amount of numbers on there. All you're doing is moving the five arrows on the left, moving them to the right point and actually moving the red text as well. So you're just labelling the five components on this slide. Sticking with the Bogan's bikes and the moon calf, we want to make sure we've got the definitions in. So at the top, a cash flow forecast is, complete the definition, inflow, how do we get all the numbers we need for inflows, what do we need to do, what is an inflow, how do we get to the total, same goes for outflows, what do we do, where do we get them from, can you give some examples and how do we get to the total. Then on the right hand side closing balance, what's the formula for closing balance. And underneath that, we've got opening balance. Now, the reason it's underneath is, remember, once you've got the closing balance, say, for January, what can you notice about the opening balance in February? Closing balance in February, and so on. And it goes on and on and on and on. So that's the observation you write in opening balance. And in the bottom box, what is the formula for net cash flow? Question nine, complete the cash flow forecast. Now this is all of it, and but don't get phased by what you've got to do. There's just a pound sign in each one so you know where to start and where, what you've got to fill in. Let's go through the box on the left. So you're constructing a cash flow statement for a gardening company in May. So you've got a whole paragraph there just about May. So we're gonna go down the column on May. If you notice, you've already got the opening balance. The company generates an average of £190,000 in sales each month. 
So in sales in May, we can write sales and we need to write £190,000. Um, it says each month. So actually, we can write it for June and July. Its regular expenses include a mortgage payment. So that's a loan for property of £35,000 per month. And that's a loan and its expenses. So you, we've got expenses on the cash flow. We can fill the first line in with mortgage. And on each month, we've got 35,000. May's wages were estimated at 55,000. So we can write in wages and we've got 55,000. Hang on, have we got the other two months? No, so let's hold off on those two. Loan repayments were 8,000 pounds and stock order was 45,000. It's highly likely we're gonna write the two going across the rows, but let's just wait to deal with all the information. In June, all payments remain the same. Boom, there it is. So write the uh, mortgage and the wages and the loan and the stock ordering all the way across the three months. Although one of the garden centres has an extension bill costing £160,000. So you need to write in one of the expenses, extension, and it's in June, so you've got £160,000. You add it in there. Then you've got, um, before we do the total expenses, we've got to look at July. Sales in July were particularly good, rising to £240,000. So we need to go back to the sales line and actually uh, increase the sales in July. The company also sold some of its land. That's an asset raising a, a, raising a further £40,000. So we've now filling in the second line of income, but it's just for July, so it's 40,000. All ex expenses remain unchanged from June, except there was no extension to pay for. So there we go. We've now ready to add up the total income. So you've got two items for May, two for June, two for July. So you add up your total income. Then you've got your expenses. You've got four things in expenses. You've got expenses for May, June and July to add up. Then you've got your formula for net cash flow. Remember the formula for net cash flow is total inflows minus total outflows. So you need your total income row across the three months and the total expenses going across the three months. Then you can calculate your net cash flow. And the last thing to look at then is closing balance. Closing balance is the opening balance plus net cash flow and you write it in in that final cell on May closing balance. And whatever you close in May, then you open in June. And then you do the same thing as going uh, across the net cash flow. You work your way down. I think we've covered that enough now. So you can work the last two months yourself. Class 10, cash flow Q&A. Let's go through these again. Let's make sure that you have picked up all the answer to them. We're looking at question one, what is cash flow? Question two, an example of an inflow and an outflow. So you need to write two things down on question two. Question three, explain what it means to a business when an inflow is higher than an outflow. And question four, the opposite, explain what it means when an outflow is higher than an inflow. Question five, the difference between the inflows and the outflows is called what? That's that extra formula and describe why a business will produce a cash flow forecast. So it's just six questions to summarise your second lesson in cash flow. You've completed lesson five on cash flow. You've completed the Doxy's 12 questions, the Billy Wiggs cash flow forecast, Niffler and Eleanor's three questions, Pickett's important question, the moon car from Bogan's Bikes, there were two bits to that, the Dewey Crawls cash flow statement and the Demi Geese's Q&A.